Today's video is going to be a good one. It's 10 skills that we should be learning from the Great Depression to survive another depression coming. Today's video starts right now. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. Hey guys, welcome to the Max. If you're new to our channel, please go down here, press subscribe, ring the bell, because it does help us spread hopefully our message that will give some wisdom to someone who can find some value in this video. Now, this video is about 10 ways or 10 skills or 10 talents that we need to learn from the Great Depression that helps us get through the next depression that may be coming. Now, that being said, is there a depression coming? We don't know. The signs are showing that our economy is not doing as well as it should. There's signs showing that we have a inflated currency, then a deflated currency. There's there's wars, there's all kind of animosity and riots going on. So that being said, what we should have learned from the Great Depression is these skills and talents that would help us get through any parts and hardships in our lives. Yes, we've modernized. Yes, we've learned so much technologically in this world. However, by not learning the skills that we used to have and not taking those along and passing those down for generations, we've learned the easy buttons. We've learned how to just click and buy whatever we wanted. We've learned to just run to the store when we have a need instead of just doing without. So let's talk about 10 skills that we need to learn from the Great Depression that will help us survive any hardships, but also another Great Depression that may be coming. Number one, it, these are not in any particular order, by the way, but number one would be woodworking. We need to understand how to build a simple structure. If it's building a simple structure for your animals, if it's fixing a structural situation at your home, if it's repairing termite damage on an outside building or on your storage shed, if it's literally patching a hole because you have a hole in your roof that now has got rain coming in, our goal is not to be master carpenters, but our goal is to learn to be a jack of all trades and understand that we need to have simple woodworking skills to do the simplest of projects. If it's putting on a door handle, if it's putting on a new locking mechanism, if it's closing up a window. So whatever it is, it is woodworking and simple carpentry skills. That's not something that you have to spend a lot of money doing. It's just simply understanding I have wood, I have this hammer, I have the screwdriver, I have a right angle, I have a tape measure. I'm learning how to use the tools that I have at my disposal. So simple woodworking skills, simple carpentry skills can maybe help you in securing your home, maybe keeping leaks out, maybe fixing something structural so something doesn't fall. It's a very vital skill to have. Number two would be welding or blacksmithing. Now, we have actually, Aiden has been on me about learning more of our welding. I can simply use a cutting torch and I can use a welding rod. I understand how it works but I can't actually keep a straight line. So for instance, we have a welder in our family and our goal is to learn more of that, to understand this could be a major necessity for us. Not only that, maybe it's blacksmithing, maybe understanding the old ways of blacksmithing and how cool it is to work with steel, work with iron and to bend and mold it to, so that way it can be utilized. So between welding and blacksmithing, it's just like woodworking and carpentry. It's another skill that we've lost a long time ago and you don't see a lot of people welding and blacksmithing anymore. If they are, they're industrial welders and they're fixing equipment. But on the simplest scales, by having that technique, it allows you to fix something if it's simply a trailer. I had a trailer the other day, a cattle trailer that broke, and it was just a, basically where an axle had, had broke off the trailer. And it took no time for this guy to fix that was a welder who knew what he was doing. So it allowed him to tack weld something, then seal it up and get me home. Make sure you understand the value of some of those trades and talents that would really benefit you in the long run. So now we're getting to the nitty gritty. Let's talk about number three, ammo making or reloading ammo that is becoming a major skill that you need to know because ammo's expense and also because now you're having a cheaper ammo you're not able to reload it so you need to know what kind of ammo you can use what kind of ammo you can shoot and then also what you need to reload i have a reloading kit it's a great skill that you need to build because ultimately between uh, government pushing against ammo and ammunition and gun use, how to survive and secure your home, to process your animals. You have to have ammo. Ammo is a big, big, big key. So if it's simply reloading the ammo and having everything you need to reload, such as your powders and your projectiles, or maybe it's not on that aspect of ammo building, maybe it's knife building, maybe it's building a bow and arrow. There's people who build beautiful recurve bows and understand the arrow and the process of building a secure form of protection. So number three, reloading the ammo 
maybe it's makeshifting this bow and arrow wherever it means to be it's a protection element a security element and also a way that you can eat and survive what may be coming with the great depression number four is a big one misty is excellent at this and also she is teaching harley as we speak it's our older our oldest daughter it's sewing understanding how to mend and sew your clothes these shirts nothing is made to last anymore and you know that anything that you've bought lately it's meant to to wear starts wearing out throw it away when the time of a depression or a great depression or another time where we will see a grid situation go down and everybody goes crazy you may not can go and buy that new shirt again so you need to learn how to mend pants mend shirts i know where we're at we have canvas overalls that are very very important to what we do here on the farm I don't need to be able to just throw those away. Those are expensive. So if we have a tear in them or a rip in them, I need Misty to be able to fix those or I need to be able to fix those. So sewing is a major, major asset to anyone. And also it's something that you can easily barter. So between ammo and sewing, you've got something that tends to lean towards something you can easily barter. Maybe you're helping somebody reload ammo. Maybe you're helping somebody mend clothing. It's a community building bartering system. Now that we're able to trade what we know to our neighbor who may can trade something to us. That's very important when we talk a depression style scenario for survival. We have to have friends. We have to have community. We have to have like-minded folks that believe like we do. Because if I'm learning the first four, maybe they may be learning the next four. It's all about being able to help each other because that's how we can survive the Great Depression. That's why you saw these big families. That's why you saw these big communities and these little towns with big families in them because they were able to help each other, send their neighbor over, send their son over, and reciprocate that. It's very important to learn these skills. Sewing is just another great asset to have that we should have passed on that a lot of people did not pass on for generations. Number five is seed saving. Being a gardener or farmer, you need to have skills to understand how to save seed. I can, I can teach you how to grow the best garden in the world, but if you don't know how to save the seed for next year, you're not gonna have a garden for next year. So you need to make sure that you're not only growing for this year, you're allowing that, that seed to go through a dying process to provide life for next year. It's a skill that so many people have lost because they don't see a need and purpose in it because ultimately if they are growing gardens they know we can run to the co-op we can buy them online and all those things are good we love Hulse tools we love survival seeds that we're sponsored and affiliated with but ultimately you need to get to the point where you're not always buying your seeds we may be trying to harvest every seed that we uh, have done for this year for next year now does that mean we're not buying more seed no we're gonna buy it until we can't buy it but one thing we did see over the last two years and when we were in lockdowns is that people saw that seeds were not in excess and that we couldn't buy them understand the value of seed saving and being able to grow and understand the crop have wisdom on the crop and on the plant not just to grow it but to save seed for next year number six is a good one too you need to know how to process or butcher an animal now i know for some of you people say oh, i can't do that my wife said the same thing when we talked about processing chickens years and years ago but after she saw it done after she saw that we were doing it here on our grounds now we teach a class on it and my wife knows how to break down a chicken now does that mean she's going to go out there and do all the butchering no but it's the skill that she knows and she knows how to break it down and know that she knows how to keep as much meat on that animal as possible. Same way with our pigs. We've broken those down in our home, right on our kitchen counter. I'm not saying go out there and kill the biggest animal you can and go take it and put it on your kitchen table. But what I am saying is maybe pick up a half of a, a, a or a quarter or a half of a pig. Maybe buy a whole chicken next time. Learn how to break it down properly. Learn the techniques of where to cut. Cut alongside bones or no cuts that you are used to eating. For instance, with our pig, we do not need actual true saw. We use a hand saw. We use knives because we've learned the technique of where to cut. Same way with a deer, same way with chickens. For instance, we have never processed a true um, uh, beef steer here on our farm. Well, guess what? I've found a guy who is doing it and, and has done it really well. And guess what? I'm going to try my hand at it on this next year. We need to process right here on farm because we have the cool room now and we can put it up. If you live in town, I'm not saying you need to go hang the steer from the tree tomorrow. I am saying that is a skill that would be wise to learn, know how to cut up an animal 
even if you're not doing the main butchering and process, it may be the way that you can help break down. You can help because you may be providing for your family with half that steer or half that pig. So it may be one of those things that you know how to sew. And for the farmer, you can say, hey, bring me all your clothes. I'm going to mend them for you. Maybe you can help seed save. So you can go and say, okay, I can seed save. Let's st if I'm the gardener, can you help me with my beef? Can you provide protein for me? Can you provide chickens for me? It's a bartering system, again, that's very important that we have lost all sight of true community like they had in the Great Depression. The second Great Depression is going to hit us harder because we're so dependent on technology and the grid and we're so dependent on ourselves and we're so narcissistic as a society that we have forgot a lot of these skills that we could have learned from our fathers and grandmothers and great grandmothers. I wish there's so many times I wish I could go back and talk to my great grandfather or great grandmother and learn some of the things that they went through, but we didn't see importance of it because of this new modernization. Not that we don't love modernization, but we need to go back and we need to learn those skills. Another biggie, number seven, is preserving your food. We talked about this in our pantry tour. Uh, not only do we freeze our, our food, not only do we cure it out if we're doing bacons using our smokehouse, not only do we can food, not only do we dehydrate food, we freeze dry food, we ferment, we learn so many ways of preservation when it comes to your food. Go back and look at the ways in Appalachia where they did the country hams. Learn ways that we can learn to sun dry, we can dehydrate. How did these people preserve their foods when all of a sudden they didn't have refrigeration? We're so dependent on the grid that we forget those things. So one thing we've learned, especially the last two to three years, is preservation, not with the freezer. Now, do we have piles of freezers and a lot of meat in freezers? Absolutely. But we've also learned how to dehydrate, freeze dry, cure, ferment, and also can. All those talents and skills are so, so good and will help your family make it in a survival situation. Growing something is great. Raising something is good. Butchering something is awesome, but if you don't know how to keep that meat or keep that vegetation for a longer extended period of time, it's not helping you. You can eat really good, but then you'll be starving the next week. I'm gonna brag on my wife on number eight, soap making. Soap making is something she's done classes on, just like the canning. We teach classes and seminars here at our home because we want people to understand these skills that we have lost, and that way they can help their communities and go and be a shining light for their areas as well. It's not just the fact that you're just able to make soap. Oh, that's great. It's the fact that you're building something for hygiene that will get us out of a situation where skin breakdown is very big. Health is a lot of times based on this biggest organ on our body, which is our skin. If we're not able to wash ourselves, clean ourselves, make sure that we're doing all we can to keep our hygiene up, then all this other stuff is going to break down because we're not going to be as healthy as we need to be to do a lot of these other skills. So soap making is huge. If there's not a depression, you've learned a skill that you can turn around and sell. Soap sells really good in our area and we send soap all over the United States, literally from Washington, uh, the state of Washington to Florida, all the way to South Carolina to Texas. We have sent it all over. I don't think we've sent it to Maine yet. So somewhere in Maine, buy some soap from us. But you need to know that as a skill because ultimately hygiene is key skills we tend to lean on certain things like food we food and shelter we need to also think about our hygiene and how important it is we have a video on hygiene and how we've built our hygiene needs uh, in 10 items that's a great video to go check out we've talked about that with medical as well and the full pantry tour shows the preserving element too so we have other videos talking about some of these skills that we've tried to learn ourselves now we are we pros on all this no but our goal is to be a jack of all trades and do as much as we can to learn and be wise because we don't want to have to be dependent on everybody else or the government or run into town because we don't have something that we need. Number nine is a big one for me because I suck at it. It's being a mechanic and understanding your automobile or your side by side or whatever it is that actually is your transportation. I've learned a little bit and I've tried to learn more and more and more. So the old farm truck, the big you know, F600. We're trying to pick up two more older trucks to utilize on our farm, but ultimately learn how to fix them. Uh, the bad thing about a lot of these new vehicles is you can't learn a lot because it depends on the computer system or the chips that's running it. So what we've done is, yes, we have a newer vehicle that we pile our kids in because we have a family of eight, but we're also learning how to build and structure and rebuild and learn old maintenance and mechanics on a vehicle. 
we want to make sure that we can make that vehicle run or diagnose the issue with it. Now that is a big skill. You need a vehicle that is older to do that. It's simpler. It also is truly on moving parts and combustion. It under, you, you need to understand how the system works. I suck at that and I'm learning day in and day out. I have a gentleman who's gonna walk us through one of the ones that we're rebuilding right now because I don't know how to do it. So I wanna learn as much as I can. Now, is that gonna make me the best master mechanic ever? No, but I make him diagnose the issue and we make him work together and fix it. Aiden, my son, has actually really wanted to get into mechanics and blacksmithing. That's two things that I should embrace and say, I'm gonna push you on it. So maybe that's some of the hobbies that you can take with your son, with your daughter. If it's sewing, Misty loves to teach sewing to our girls. She loves to, for them to help with soap. There's ways that you can build a family around some of these things and it also helps us get away from modernization and just the TV and start focusing back on our family. These skills can help us and not only help us, it can help us survive another Great Depression. Number 10 is going to be herbalism and medicine. You cannot depend on doctors, nurses, hospitals, or medical clinics if all this stuff goes down. If you're in a situation where we're in a depression, we're in an economic collapse, we're in a scenario that we're living in a Great Depression, you need to know how to take care of your family. So you need to stockpile medicines. I'm not saying that. There's nothing wrong with stockpiling over-the-counter medicines or buying from Jace Medical like our affiliate down below. Those are great things, but you need to learn how to forage. You need to learn that this, this pine and that pine needle can do a lot of good things. That black-eyed Susan laying over there or that weed that's over here in this grass can do great things. Herbalism, knowing how it works, using essential necessities that our ground is providing. God made everything in our earth to provide for us. If it's the, the food that's in this lake, if it's the sheep that's over here that we're raising on farm, or maybe it's the weed laying right here, that we just don't understand the property of that grass or of that weed or of that herb, it could truly heal our bodies. For instance, elderberry, we foraged it for years and then all of a sudden now we have elderberry growing all over our property. We've learned to propagate, we've learned to make cuttings. Because of it now, we've built this, this, this wonderful herb and, and medicinal plant paradise on our property. Have we made it to knowing all this knowledge? No, but we, Misty is literally making notes every day. She's foraging every week to find new things and new ways to heal our bodies naturally. We don't want to depend on pharmaceuticals all the time. We don't want to depend on uh, running to the doctor all the time. We want to do it just like they did back in the old days and say, you know what? We can be safe. We can be healthy. We can provide our food. We can fix our stuff. We can provide herbal medicine for ourselves. Do we want another depression? Absolutely not. I hope I'm completely wrong. But the way and the environment of our world right now is showing that this recession could creep into something more. We could see an economic collapse. It may not be a full blown on depression. It may be a depression. It may be a loss of jobs. All these skills can help you. They're not only skills, they're trades. They can help you make money in a situation if you lose your job. It may be ways that you can save money and budget because you're able to fix your own clothes or fix your own car now. There's more benefits than just saying, oh, we're going to survive another Great Depression. It's those skills that we did not learn and we didn't get passed down from generations before us because we saw no need in it. Now, we see a need in it. Learn these skills. Maybe pick up one or two and be excellent at them. Maybe be a jack of all trades on two or three of them. And maybe have a friend and a community member who can do the rest for you. Work together, live together, understand the value of raising your family and surviving maybe what could be another Great Depression. Guys, thank you so much. Ultimately, your hope is not in what we've learned, but it's in Jesus. God bless. Happy